This is the third annual men's leadership conference at the Manchester Memorial Hospital. We gotta thank some people for putting this on. You guys are not in that chair by yourself. There's organizations that think highly of you, that think the world of you, that want to see you succeed in life, and they are. The Manchester Rotary Club, Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Manchester Memorial Hospital, and Manchester Police Department. If there's any other organization that sponsors, I omit it. I am sorry, and we'll do it at the conclusion. So I'll make sure I'll circle back and get you. But these organizations care about you folks, all right? These people, and you see them around the room, you see them outside. So they were one of the ones that started off feeding you, okay? Feeding is not free. Someone had to pay for that. So these are the organizations that came together that thought it worthy to support this organization, to support this effort. So how's everybody today? Let's start with some basics. How's everybody doing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ready to get through the day? All right. I'm from Hartford. Born and raised in Hartford. Born and raised in the north end of Hartford. I'm a Weaver High School graduate, so y'all Manchester folks, ease up now. Don't, don't, don't treat me bad because I'm from Weaver. But I'm a Weaver guy. And uh, my story is, is such that I was, a, I was a high school athlete, track and field. We were state champions, indoor, outdoor track. My exposure to college came through athletics. Even though I was a great student, if you know anything about Hartford and the Fox Foundation scholar, I was a Fox scholar. So I was a scholar athlete in this true form, and that was one of the things you mentioned earlier, which was important. It's important, young men, that you do two things. Handle your academics well, and handle your business in whatever aspect it is, whether it's athletics, clubs and organizations, music, theater, whatever you do. Okay, so again, all those things are, are connected to what you can do and what you can't do. One thing, this particular piece is about college admissions, but we're talking careers as well. So again, the first thing I want to ask any question, how many of you are interested in going to college? Okay, and there might be some who are not interested in going to college. The thing is, you can make a living for yourself whether you go to college or not. But like the young man said earlier, you need to have a plan about what it is that you're trying to do. What's your how? What's your why? What is it? And how do you go about it? And you have to have a plan. That's why I like this thought process about your model and what, what brings you motivation. What gets you up and excited in the morning. That's got to drive you. And one thing about me is this drives me. I've been the director of admissions at Central Connecticut State University for the past 15 years. I was also director of admissions at Western Connecticut State University before that. This gentleman actually hired me to come to Central and be in that role. And one of the things that I've never forgotten is being in a moment in a place where I was sitting in high school or middle school in Hartford. Where, where, at least when I was in Hartford, the thought was that if you went to Weaver, you couldn't be anything. You couldn't do anything. And I don't know what they say about Manchester. I'm not from Manchester. But I know in life how we're projected and how we're perceived, young men. And what I'm here to tell you, along with my colleague, is that you can be any thing you want to be, you can do what you want to do, and you can go where you want to go, but it takes work and it takes a plan, and that's what they were talking about earlier. And when I graduated high school, I have people that I went to high school with that are lawyers, doctors, engineers, you name it, they're all doing it. And so the message today, this morning, guys, is um, I'm going to tell my age with this statement, um, and we're celebrating 50 years of rap. So y'all know Public Enemy? Any of y'all know Public Enemy? So Public Enemy had this song, Don't Believe the Hype. Um, you know Flavor Flav? Y'all seen Flavor Flav before? Uh, all right. Well, y'all can Google him. One of the things I did in the other group, anything y'all have now, y'all can Google, y'all can browse, y'all can look up. 
because it doesn't matter the person, because there were people before me that I didn't know, and one of the things that we just have to pass down and learn the lesson. What's the fortune? The lesson. So the lesson is, is you can you can we can stay focused in the company that you want to be. How many of you believe that? Um, but it takes time. It takes work. Let me jump in here and get to um, one of the things we'll talk about again. Um, Again, colleges and universities, there are over 4,000 colleges and universities across this nation. And some of you know colleges and universities you've never been to. So athletics can teach geography. Athletics can teach finance. I mean, you know how much money is involved in college athletics. Or in the NBA. Or in golf. They have a whole debate in golf. I'm a golfer between Liv and PGA. And one of the things about life that we have to understand is a lot of things have intersection. And so when we're talking about colleges and universities, it's in 4,000 across the country. And geography matters because culture matters. You grew up in Manchester, and you jump over to Avon, and there would be a different culture and climate in Avon. How many of you know if you moved from Manchester to Hartford, it'd be a different environment and culture? Even just moving from Manchester to East Hartford might be different. <laughs> or for that matter, just moving across the street. <laughs> Sometimes it's a different. But when you're choosing colleges and universities, the point is you have choice. All those things come into play. Four-year universities. There's about 2,000 plus four-year universities, about another 2,000 plus two-year institutions. You have private institutions. And you, in Connecticut alone, 40 plus colleges and universities in Connecticut alone. I'm very serious. You only know like four or five. That's why we're here, right? That's exactly why we're here. There are 40 plus colleges and universities in Connecticut. Now that number might change. That number is going to get funny now, depending on what they do at CT State, because there were 12 community colleges in Connecticut. They're now one, but 12 locations. <laughs> All right. So again, but prior to that, there were only 40. And in the last uh, group, I quizzed them about one: what college in Connecticut closed recently? Uh, what college in Connecticut closed recently? Okay. All right, so one of the things we're going to do, like in the last group, because I believe in challenging people. Um, so if you have a phone, Google that question, and I want somebody to tell me the answer uh, real quick. Okay? And then we have some historically black colleges and universities. Yeah, that's right. Jackson State is one, right? Why do you think you know Jackson State? Because of Coach Prime. Howard's another. Howard's another. Morehouse is another. What's another? Okay. So again, Stone Academy. Get his brother a hand for looking that up and getting that. It's the power of it's the power of information. One of the things that again. Again, I said to you guys, I'm very intentional and I'm very strategic. One of the things about anything you want to know right now, uh, you have an opportunity to look it up. It's all in what you spend your time looking up and trying to explore. When he was talking about investing earlier, it's what do you invest your time doing? You can, you can research things and learn things, or you can play all day, or you can mix it up. It's all what you want to do in life. It's about balance. I'm never one to tell people you can't have fun, you can't play. Yes, you can. But there's a time and a place for everything. Like now, guys. Like now, guys. It's a time and a place to be focused and serious. So my words and my motto is always about focus and being serious. That's, that's, that's how I live. That's how I live every day. I'm on a mission every day to get something done, to get something accomplished. So when he was talking about model and focus, <laughs> gentlemen, you're talking about respect. You're talking about respect. 
gentleman who talked about respect. If you have something to say, put your hands up, share. I'll gladly give up the floor. It might be important. I'm not saying we can't have something to say. This is a shared conversation, but we're going to do it. Let's do it together. So I'll be on the same page. Is there something in that corner we need to share? So again, those are the opportunities. Make a whip wish list. How many seniors in the room? How many of you have applied to college already? I've seen them. All right. How many juniors in the room? All right, the juniors, you guys need to start talking to the seniors and find out what they did. How many sophomores? Are you? How many freshmen are in the room? Okay. Freshmen, you should be in great shape by being in presentations like this and having the privilege to sit in a room around juniors and seniors. I was telling this story earlier. This guy in the back, in the left, the black jacket on. I shared with him something early that he never knew. So he's a couple of he's a couple of class years ahead of me in high school. I remember literally to this day when he came back from Christmas and spoke to the underclass. I remember that today like it was yesterday. I never shared that with him until this morning. It's things that happen in your life that you never forget. I have a good memory to begin with, but there are moments like that. I was like, he went to college? He went down to Virginia to college? I know he was a football player. He was all right. He was <laughs> okay in football. Tight end. Right. But I remember when he came back. So I'm saying to the seniors, come back. If you go to college next year, come back, talk to the people, tell them about your experience. And if Manchester's not doing that, I would encourage that. Because one of the things we need to do is have iron sharp and iron so that we're not making mistakes or we're avoiding some of the mistakes that people made ahead of us. So again, make a wish, a wish list. But I always tell people I like to go to college and get the paper. And there's two types of paper that I want folks to get. One is the diploma. And the other is the money. Who said the money? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and as the world changes and we use different currency, not so much the paper anymore, but you get the point. Um, so again, those things are important. Um, you can decide if you want to be close to home, far away. Um, you can decide what kind of experiences you want. You know, whether you're looking for cultural clubs and organizations, academic clubs and organizations, whether you want to be able to participate as a student athlete, whether you want to perform in a choir or a glee club or anything else that the college may offer. Somebody mentioned in the earlier group of chess club. A lot of colleges have chess clubs and other things. So you want to be in a college or university that has what you want. And then you want to make sure that there's a great network and again, so those things are those things are important. Um, but whatever you do, make sure you find an environment that's comfortable for you, where you can thrive and be who you are. Okay. Um, get advice. Um, there's there are plenty of people in the room. Get advice from your friends. Get advice from each other. Get advice from school counselors. Get advice from family. How many of you are first generation? You know what that means. It means that you're the first in your, if you go to college, you'll be the first in your family to go, or, or your parents haven't gone to college. Let's make it easy. How many of you have parents who have college degrees? All right. Okay. So if not, I have this pen that says first generation. A lot of times when you're first generation, they're going to be thinking about the process that you don't know, that you don't understand. That's why I'm saying to the seniors, help the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen now learn what you're learning as you're going through it, or help them avoid some of the mistakes you might make as a senior, and that they don't have to go through it next year. And then every year we get better and better at it. And the freshmen, where are the freshmen again? And the freshmen, by the time they're seniors, they don't even worry about it. They know it like clockwork. So get help, get advice, and then um, again, last thing, visit, visit colleges and universities. Take a tour of campus, come and speak to counselors, 
come up for events, and then there'll be some college fairs for the junior sophomores and freshmen. The biggest college fair in this area will take place typically in April, and it takes place in Hartford at the Expo Center. Normally there are about 350 colleges from across the country, I should say from across the world, because there's some international students as well. And if you're ever looking to be exposed to a variety in one setting, that is the biggest opportunity in the area. It's actually one of the largest college fairs in the country. Uh, and it will be right in Hartford in your backyard. So I'm going to stop there and turn it over to Dr. Page, and he's going to talk first, all right? Everyone, again, my name is Joe Page, Dr. Joe Page. I'll tell you a little bit about my story and how I got to where I am. And uh, just share a little bit of some things about why I got a hand up. Oh, good. Okay. Anyway, um, a fit at college is really important, also. You know, uh, finding a school where you feel at home, they have uh, programs or they have people of interest that you think you can grow with, that's very, very important. I mainly came to talk to you guys about the why of college. You know, we talked about definitely important to go, but as the, our speaker said when we opened the day, you know, he was going for his mother to kind of really, you know, pay homage to his mother and prove for, to his uh, younger siblings about college. So, well, what are some of the reasons why you may want to go to college outside of that? Joe? Joel or Joel? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in I Philadelphia. Know, I'm going Joel and B. Is it Joel? <laughs> it's Joel. Okay, Joel. Uh, so to have a stable amount of income. Like that, stable income. Any other reason for college? Better, <clears throat> to better your like understanding of certain things. Woo, like that. You got sharper in the first group. Any other reason for college? Jay, I'm gonna pick with you, brother. More opportunities too. Sports to play or to watch. True, good thing, yeah. More opportunity. I'm, I'm going over here, man. What's the re What's a good reason for college? I'm picking with you. What's a good reason to go to college? Yeah, because it's... I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Okay. All right. Let me have your attention. Great job. Generational wealth. Woo. Who is it? I like that. All right. Increasing opportunities, right? Increasing opportunities. But also, one of the big things is this, is what I came to talk to you guys about. Oh, be quiet. You guys know what unemployment rate means. Yeah. What does that mean? People who don't have jobs. Woo! I like that. Well, percentage of people who don't have jobs versus, you know, people who do. Um, so in the, in, the, in the packet I gave you guys, in the packet I gave you, the first page kind of has a chart which talks about the earnings and unemployment rates by educational attainment, meaning by what degree you may have or what high school diploma, right? And it also tells you, that this didn't come out too well, but as far as the unemployment rate, for those who say have a high school diploma, the unemployment rate's like 4% of the population you know, cannot find, or unemployed. Where if you have a bachelor's degree, it's like 2.2%. And it fluctuates, you know, up and down from there. So, but for students of color, for black students, Latino students, those rates are higher than what's produced, what you hear on the news. They're always high, you right? Those, in, those things impact students of color and families harder than they do for the overall population. So you have to understand that those rates are higher. So having a degree will give you such a better opportunity to have employment, right? Now whether that employment, you know, is in your field that you want, we'll talk about that in a minute, but even if you just had to go get a job to sustain your family or to so forth, when you have a degree, it means so much. I've been in so many situations where job opportunities were around, and I'm trying to get a job for a young man who I may be working with, and they say, does he have a degree, right? It might not matter what the degree is, but do you have a degree? Now, what, what does that mean to have a degree? What is the, like, the, one of the fundamental purposes of having a degree? What does that mean? 
Honestly, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'll answer that for you. What does it mean to have a degree? Put the work, validation, you put the work in. I like that. You've completed a rigorous curriculum to attain something, right? Which means you persevere. So your knowledge, your knowledge of accounting with a degree might not be different than the dude who's, who's almost at a degree but didn't get it, but it means you actually went through and completed um, a rigorous curriculum to get to that point, right? You kind of put through everything to get to the final part. And it, it also means that you have, in most colleges, you have what they call like liberal arts and other things like that, which expose you to other parts of the world. So you, you focus on your skill might be accounting, but you have to take psychology, you have to take history, you have to take other courses where you can learn about the world, right? And outside of what surrounds you. So it makes you a well-rounded person also. So a lot of times when you see where they're just looking for someone to have a degree, they want a person who's well-rounded, you know, in whatever position. It might be a position as a supervisor, you know, in a, in a store or something like that, but they want you to have a good understanding of uh, what goes on around you. Um, I want to also share with you, these next two pages just talks about educational attainment for black students, Latino students, but also it talks to it by population, uh, by age, by race, and so forth like that. But there's also a page, or two pages in here, that talks about income that you have based off of what major you want to go into. Now, I know when Mr. Hall was talking, that was, there weren't a lot of people who knew exactly what they wanted to do as far as a major yet. Who actually knows exactly what they want to major in? Exactly. Yes, sir. What for? Law. Oh, great. Anybody else know exactly what they want to major? Yeah. Political science. Okay. Computer science. All right. Excellent. These are things that you can look up in various different um, sites to see exactly what the income is on what you want to go to. Now, as you guys are exploring at this point in time, and nobody's uh, making you determine what major you want to go in, this is the time to look for what jobs uh, we have as computer science, they can tell you four years from now what will be the expected income for somebody in computer science. They can also tell you what parts of the country are the most jobs for people with computer science. So you have all these opportunities to look at law or whatever it is, business that you want. So I would definitely tell you to take the time to do that. Um, and a couple of things I want to get to before we close. Do you remember what our speaker said about taking notes earlier? Note takers are money makers. Note takers are money makers. But actually, it's funny. I was laughing because I was taking notes while he was writing that. So I guess that's, that, that, that kind of says a little bit about me. But I want to talk to you guys about something with yourself. Um, now, I see, uh, anybody know what their own brand is? Anybody know what a brand is? Sharif, you have on a Nike shirt. What's Nike's brand? What's one word that you would say about Nike? We think of Nike. What's the first thing that comes to your head? Just do it. Okay. Okay. Um, who else has a brand on? Jade, you have Nike on. You have a Brooklyn on, right? Anybody else have a brand? What's uh, what's UConn's brand? What? Not their motto, but what's their brand? What's UConn? What's the first thing you think about UConn? Huh? What's the first thing you think about UConn? Nike. <laughs> yeah, it could be it could be basketball. Like, 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 like Mr. Hall was saying about the University of Colorado. You know, it might be might be the, uh, But let me ask you this: Poland Spring. They have a brand, right? Listen up, guys. Listen up, guys. Poland Spring. What's their brand? I mean, that's what they sell. But what's their brand? Poland Spring. But what's their brand? No, what do you what do you think what's it supposed Nature. to be? What are they trying water. to sell? Water, water. water. Fresh water, good water, right? Opposed to something else, right? Just sell water. Okay, what's another brand that's out there? Guys, uh, please. Vaseline. What's their brand? Moisturization. <coughs> Moisturization. I like that. Okay, so let me ask you this. Chris, what's your brand? What's your one word that people talk about, Chris? What are they gonna say? What would you like them to say? Nice. Okay. Jay. Athletic. 
Bro. Yeah. Athletic. Athletic. <laughs> Everybody? What do you want them to say about you? Right? That's your brand. Okay? So at this point in time, as our speaker was saying earlier about working hard to do, to come up with a, a plan or be successful, this is the time to start asking yourself these questions. What do you want people to think about you? What do you want? Um, it could be a teacher, it could be your neighbor, it could be anybody. You want to have them to have some opinion of you, right? And I mean, I hope, I hope you want it to be positive, but you want to have them some opinion of, like, yo, he just, he's just, that's my dude. It might not be, like in Philly we say to John, anybody heard of John? That, that just means, like, he's, he's the man, right? He's the John, right? Oh, that's my boy, he's the John. Everybody know what that means. But that, that means you're legitimate, you're a together brother, you're all right. Think about what you want to be known as. What do you want people to think of you when they say your name? It, not just now, but when you leave Manchester High, when you go on, when you go on to college, what do you want to be known as when you're walking on campus? So, all right. So I'm gonna leave you with that. The last thing I'm gonna leave you with is something else. Listen, guys. Yeah. Every day, opportunities are walking around disguised as challenges. What does that mean? You said what? Every day, opportunities are walking around disguised as challenges, I like said. There's things that are hard, right? Remember he was saying you got to go for the hard things, right? It's not always the easy path. There might be somebody who's, 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 who's going to be around to teach you about a job or teach you about law or whatever it is you want to go through, but you have to make the time. You have to make the time to go introduce yourself to that person. Right? If somebody's at your school and they're doing, they're talking about a career that you like, forensic science to say, take the time to go talk to that young man, that, that young woman, and introduce yourself, because you never know what opportunity might open up for you, right? Because of your interest, they might connect you with somebody to give you a scholarship. I've seen that happen dozens and dozens of times. Okay? So don't look at every challenge as something that's hard. Sometimes look at it as an opportunity. Thank you, thank you very much, young man.